Welcome back to Number Math, in which we apply color to identify and sequence within math. The Unit 3A test takers have asked, and Number has delivered within hours, converting his 323 to 324 fact and review for next week into a dual tool for those Unit 3A test takers for tomorrow. All right, if you have me in class, yes, you do know that we follow a sequence of colors when sequencing through. Sometimes we use those colors to identify as well. However, we will use those same colors consistently and then fade away as we build our confidence we are prepared to take an SAT in black and white. All right, starting with number one, we will factor x squared minus 81. We have a difference of perfect squares. All right, so let's just take a look how this does look when we write it. X squared is a perfect square because X times X gives us the X squared. And 81 is a perfect square, however, and has a difference there. So the square root of 81 is a 9, giving us 9 times 9 is 81. But because of the difference, we have to do a positive 9 minus 9, giving us the negative 81. And just to show you that, no, you do not need to write the arrows and all of that. However, go ahead and circle your answers. That should be a simple one and move on to the next one. For number two, we will factor all the way through. Oh my goodness, things have changed. A is greater than one. However, the game remains the same. Step one, let's label our A, B, and C values. Step two tells us to take our A value, which is 4, multiply it by our C value of 15. 4 times 15 is 60. We have now completed the top slot of the diamond. Step 3 tells us to locate our B value. Beautiful, negative 17. And to write that in the bottom slot of our diamond. From there, we will take the factors of our A times C value. Yes, I did add the colors there, which is 60. And we will write the factors in green. However, let's take a look. Okay, so when we write these, well, A times C is a positive. And when combined, they need to be a negative. So here's what I do when I notice that. I will write all of our factors is negative one times negative 60 is double negatives because a negative times a negative gives us a positive, but when combined will give us that negative we're looking for. All right, I may or may not continue to write out all of the factors considering we do have our factoring sheet that has been provided for us. So if we can just look at those, which the majority of us are 100% comfortable already, if not fading completely away from it, in finding our factors that we may use here. All right, now if we go through, if you're unsure, well, negative one minus 60 is negative 61, negative two minus 30 is negative 32, negative three minus 20 is negative 23, negative four minus 15 is negative 19, and negative five minus 12 is what? Yes, it is negative 17. All right, so I will box those bad boys. I know that they're going for the W. All right, negative 5 and negative 12 in the box score. All right, I will also highlight those in brown because in step 5, we will rewrite this function here, and we will incorporate step 4 by breaking up our second term of the negative 17x. So let's go ahead and just start by rewriting this. All right, the first term and third term stay the same. We're just using the factors here to break up our second term. So 4x squared just remains 4x squared. All right, then we will do negative 5x, so minus 5x. Now, due to our next step, I like to leave a little bit of a space. So right about here is why I put the negative 12x, because we will eventually group those in the next step. Plus 15 is our third term stays the same. Our next step in orange just tells us to take our first two terms that we wrote and group them together. So let's go ahead and do that. And then it says do the exact same for the other two terms. Perfect. From here, step seven is it seems like where students struggle the most. However, we are definitely getting much stronger. Now, key note written within those steps, okay, if the first term in the group is positive, then the greatest common factor numerically will be a positive, okay? So our 4x squared, negative 5x squared, well, the 4 is positive, so we know it's going to be a positive here. However, 5 is a prime number, meaning that only 1 can be our greatest common factor. 
unless this were a 10, a 15, and went along with the 5 as well, which it certainly does not. Okay, so we'll pull the 1 out. Do you need, necessarily need to write the rule 1? No, you can go straight to the x values if you'd like, or our variables, should I say. We have an x squared with our first term here, and we have an x in our second term, meaning, yes, we can take 1x from both, and we can't take 2 because we can't take 2x away from 1, but we can't take 1x away from 2. All right, so then we will take our greatest common factor of 1x and divide it by both terms within the group. 4 divided by 1 is simply 4. Remember, we subtract the variable and their exponent. So x squared minus x to the imaginary first would leave us just that 1x. And we will divide negative 5x by 1x as well. Negative 5 divided by 1 is negative 5. x minus x, well, there's nothing left. So we can just simply close our parentheses. We do the exact same process again. Looking at negative 12x and 15, oh my goodness, our first term is a negative. What should I do? Don't freak out. Take our negative. Easy bake oven, baby. Set it and forget it. All right. From here, we need to find the greatest common factor numerically between 12 and 15, which is, yes, looking at your sheet three. Thank you so much. Do we need to bring an x down? No. Why not? Oh my goodness, the second term of 15, well... There's no variable. All right, so we just open our parentheses and we divide each term by negative 3. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 is a positive 4. And our x, well, if we can't subtract it or take it away from anything, well, we just drop it down. And then our second term of negative 3, we will do the same with 15 divided by negative 3 is, yes, minus 5. And... Here's also something that's great and useful in doing the grouping method here. Well, 4x minus 5 inside of our parentheses, is that the same of this? Yes, it is. Guess what? We will take one of those and incorporate it within our final answer. Okay, now what about 1x and minus 3? Oh my goodness, you're telling me the 1x, the minus 3, the outer two terms make up the other group? Yes, it does. And we will just write it as x minus 3, because if we are taking a standardized test, the imaginary one will not be there. So just to build that comfortability, go ahead and circle your answer. All right, so number 2, if you're taking the unit, goes for number 5 and 13. And number 1, if you're taking the unit, can go for number 3. All right, number 3 here and 4 will go for my crew, as it looks like I didn't write any numbers there for it. All right, so I'll continue to do this in black and white. However, I know that we're comfortable in labeling our a times c. So I'm just going to do 2 times negative 24, right up top, get our negative 48. Our b value is 13. Wonderful job. Okay, now some of you guys might just be 100% comfortable and you're like, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. This is perfect. However, if we're uncomfortable here, well, we can continue to write the factors out. So let's do our negative 48 here. And we need to get to a positive 13 with our factors. So the greater of the two, all right? So because a times c gives us a negative 48, the greater of the two numbers will be positive. Meaning every time I write these out, the first number of the pair of factors, I will put negative, And then I will multiply that by its positive. All right, so let's just continue to write these out just so you can see that one more time. And that completes that. All right, so negative 1 plus 48 is 47. Not there. Negative 2 plus 24 is 22. Negative 3 plus 16 is, oh my goodness, yes, it's 13. Box it. Let's go. All right, we will box it here. Then I'll bring in my brown. No, I'm not frowning. I might be going downtown. All right, then from here, we simply just rewrite it again. All right, we have 2x squared plus 13x minus 24. So we will do our 2x squared using our negative 3 and 16 to split our second term of 13x, negative 3x. I will leave just a little bit of a space to do a 16x, and then followed by our minus 24. All right, from here, we will group those. Ooh, 
Sorry. Did a step in orange there that I missed. All right. So those are pretty much, guys, 100% confident, all of you within that. And again, step seven here in pink is where we may say just a little bit of a struggle. However, go ahead and riddle me this, guys. Is our greatest common factor going to be negative or positive? Yes, it will be positive. And why? Yes, because the 2 in front of our x squared here is positive. All right, since this term is positive, the greatest common factor will be a positive as well. And yes, it is just 1. Great job, guys. Thank you. Go ahead and open up that parenthesis. Oh, no. Thank you. What do they share? Yes, the same variable of x. Go ahead and add that too. Now open up the parenthesis. From here, we will take that. And we will divide each term by the 1x. 2 divided by 1 is simply 2x squared minus that imaginary x to the first leaves you the x. We do the same thing over here. Negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3. And x minus x, go ahead and cross those out. All right, now between 16x and negative 24, is our 16 negative or is that 16 positive? Yes, it is positive. And what's the greatest common factor numerically between 16 and 24? No, it's not 4. Yes. It is 8. Go ahead and write that there. Open up your parentheses. Divide each by 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Don't forget to bring down your x. Negative 24 divided by 8 is negative 3. Great job. Close it. Are we finished? No. However, let's check our answer. Within the parentheses, if they're the exact same, we know we've done it correctly. 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3. Go ahead and write that as one group is your final answer. And what, again, goes on the outside? Yes, this time it's x plus 8. Go ahead and circle your answer. Moving forward to number 4, 2x squared plus 17x plus 26. All things positive. And again, I'm not going to label, all right? Our A, B, and C, yes, up top is A times C. 2 times 26 is 52. Great job there. All right, on the bottom, our B value, yes, 17. Wonderful job. All right, we do have the factors here of 52. All right, we have 1 and 52. Let's see, we have 2 and 26. What else do we have? Does 3 work? I do believe it may. Let's see, 39 and another 12. No, it doesn't. My bad on that. Yes, 4 and 13, oh my goodness, what about 4 and 13? 4 plus 13 is 17. See, so sometimes we just have to talk it through. But guys, you have your factoring sheet, please utilize it, okay? We will go ahead and I will highlight those in brown as well. And depending on where we're at in our comfortability, I might decide to fade off the colors just a little bit to speed up the process here. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and write this out. We have 2x squared. We are using our 4 and 13 to bring up our second term of 17x. So plus 4x plus, and we don't need the plus if we're going to group it later, so let's get rid of it now. 13x plus 26. All right, then we will close our parentheses off for both. Next step, find the greatest common factor within group one. All right, well, if all things are positive, our greatest common factor will be positive between four and two. Yes, we can pull a two out of both. We can also pull an X from both. And guys, just so you can see, it flows the exact same way every time. So if we can pull an X out here, yes, we can pull an X out here. Let's open up the parentheses, all right? Divide each term. By our greatest common factor, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Yes, x squared minus x to the first is x. We will divide our second term again by 2x. 4 divided by 2 is simply 2. Boom. Cross those bad boys out. x minus x leaves us nothing. But look at the answer here, okay, when we work through. Um, we have the 1x. This also has an x right here, the first term in the group. And then the second term does not include 1. So we're going to see the exact same flow and structure here as well. So between 13 and 26, yes, 13 is the greatest common factor. So we'll drop a 13 there, and then we will do the exact same per the usual. Open up. 13 divided by 13 is 1. Bring down your x. I'll bring down the 1 with it just this time. 26 divided by 13, yes, is 2. And is what we have in the parentheses the exact same? It certainly is x plus 2 and x plus 2. 
So in our final answer, we will go ahead and write that as one of our groups. And then we will also take our two outside terms of 2x and 13, completing our answer. All right, so for number 5, 11x squared minus 25x minus 24. Oh my goodness, large numbers. Dude, no sweat. Get the calculator out in the chat. Someone please for me. Do 11 times negative 24. Thank you. You will get that negative 264. Awesome job, guys. Thank you so much. Wonderful work. Down below, our B value in blue will be negative 25. I will write the factors for this one just to kind of build that comfortability. If we're looking for the factors here of negative 264, all right, that when combined will give us a negative B value here for our second term, that negative 25. That means the greater of the two factors, when I write them out, I will put a negative next to it because in the long haul, that needs to be negative, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that, okay? We will list out one times negative 264, two times negative 132, three times negative 88, four times negative 66, six times, oh my goodness, I'm getting tired of this, negative 44, Eight times negative 33, I'm going to call it quits right there, just because I do know when I do 8 minus 33, Kobe minus the bird, we do get the negative 25, so I will box this. And yes, there are more factors, but no, I don't feel like writing them all. I just wanted to make sure we got to our answer to use. Thank you. Great job, guys. All right, so we will use our 8 and negative 33. And again, I'll go with the box and brown in. Thank you so much. Here we go. Just trying to speed up the process a little bit. Sorry, it's not perfect. All right, never said I was a great artist. Filling in our color here, 11x squared. And again, that negative 25x, this is why we found our factors that work, so we can split that up right there. All right, that 8's positive, so we'll do plus 8x. And again, I'll leave that little space. And since that's a negative 33, yes, I will drop the negative 33. I will put the x, and then we will just write our third term of negative 24 and put those bad boys together right there. All right, so next portion in orange. Yes, I will group them together. Great, grand, wonderful. All right, so 11 here, prime number. So numerically, our greatest number will be a 1. And then we have an X that we can pull from both. And again, guys, it's the same process every time. Why did they decide to do so many of these? I don't know. It's insane. 11 divided by 1 is 11X squared minus X to the first is simply X. Plus 8 divided by 1 is 8 X minus X leaves us nothing. Great job so far. All right. So, oh my goodness. First term in our second group is a negative. What should we do with it? Yeah, just go ahead and drop it down. Now let's find the greatest common factor between 33 and 24, which, yes, I think I heard it, is 3. Great job. We will take that and divide it by both. Negative 33 divided by negative 3 gives us a positive 11. Don't forget to bring down your x. Negative 24 divided by negative 3, yes, is a positive 8. Go ahead and close that off. And is what's in parentheses the exact same? Show is. All right, that will be part of our answer is 11x plus 8. And then our two outside terms is x minus 3. Go ahead and circle your answer. Number six, you can use this for 2, 4, and 12 to guide you through on your unit. All right. Oh, yes. A is just one. Let's just go ahead and do one times 36 or just take the C value of 36. We'll drop that negative 15 below. Thank you all so much. I do appreciate it. Now, A times C needs to be a positive. However, this needs to be a negative. All right. So we will use two negative numbers. And if I did 12 times 3, I'd get to 36. But negative 12 times negative 3 gets me to 36. And negative 12 minus 3 gets me my negative 15 that we're searching for. 
All right, wonderful job right there. And yes, can we simply break those out? We can, but since A is equal to 1, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to simply write it as X minus 12 and X minus 3. Go ahead and circle your answer. Nice little relief there. Oh my goodness, here we go again. Yes, you can use this for number 14 and 16 on the Unit 3 review as a guidance tool. All right, so A times C is 5 times negative 8, giving us negative 40. Great job, had by all. Our negative 6 is our B value. Awesome sauce, thank you all so much. All right, I will drop the negative 40 there. Um, so when A times C is negative 40, and then our B is also a negative all right, within our factors, we will have a positive and a negative number. However, the negative number will be the greater one because our B value is negative. And just to show you that, I actually will write these out. So we'll do 1 times negative 40, 2 times negative 20, 4 times negative 10, 5 times negative 8. All right, so if we did 1 minus 40, you'd get negative 39. 2 minus 20 is negative 18. 4 minus 10, oh my goodness, gives us our negative 6. And we already know that 4 times negative 10 gives us our negative 40. We have found our pair. You are the weakest link. In this case, maybe the strongest. All right, so let's go ahead and yes, I will just for continuity purposes continue to brown that in. All right, from here, then we do our 5x squared. What did we break up? The negative 6x. Oh, my goodness, you guys are amazing. So plus 4x, leave a little bit of space. Thank you, minus 10x, minus 8. Why isn't that working? It auto switched to highlighter somehow. In orange, we will group the first two. Then in orange, we will group the second two. We will go to pink and just start working our... Um, greatest common factor, 5x squared plus 4x. Go ahead. Yes, it is 1 numerically. And yes, we can take an x from both just like every other one of them. All right. 5 divided by 1 is 5x squared minus x to the first is simply just an x. And we will continue to the same. 4 divided by 1 is 4x minus x. And just the same cancels out. Close it up. Negative 10 and negative 8. Oh, my goodness. First term's negative. I'm going to drop the negative. Greatest common factor between 10 and 8 is 2. And we will do the exact same. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 is a positive 5. Don't forget to bring down your x. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is a positive 4. And again, go ahead and bring that down. All right, 5x plus 4 on the inside, 5x plus 4 on the inside. Yes, we have solved this correctly. And yes, 5x plus 4 will be part of our answer as well as the 1x minus 2 or just x minus 2. Go ahead and circle your answer. Moving forward to number 8, and again, another big number one. But guys, seriously, all right, worst comes to worst. Do me a favor, go to your calculator, and you can simply get this as well by hitting y equals putting in the number, hit divided by, um, to the right of alpha, you'll see like an X kick off, that'll give it to you. Hit second, hit graph, it'll spit out a table of all the factors, and remember, no decimals. All right, and if we do 11 times 34 in our calculator, what do we get? 374, wow, wonderful, great, grand, wonderful. Our B value is simply that 39. And guess what? Although this is a larger number, there aren't too many factors, I believe, with this one. Okay, I think we have, uh, let's see, 1 and 374, that's for sure. All right, well, that's be an even number, so we'll definitely have a 2 here, giving us that 187. From what I remember, I think it's 11 and 34. All right, and then we also have a 17 and the double deuce, 22. All right, well, 1 plus 374, no chance. 2 plus 187, no shot. 11 plus 34, return Jordan of 45, doesn't work. But 17 plus 22, go ahead and box it. Gives us our 39. Fill those bad boys in. As you can tell, guys, this is the exact same stuff, just on repeat. It's all it is the entire way through. I know, it gets boring for me, too. But... Practice builds proficiency and repetition builds retention. All right, let's write that out. 11 
x squared plus, great job guys, 17x. All right, that 22 is a positive, so we'll just not even write the plus and just do 22x and then plus 34, which is our third term. All right, the reason we have three up here and four down here is because again, we're splitting the second term of 39x between 17x and 22x. All right, let's group them. Hey, grouper. Oh, nothing. Chopping on Groupon. Awesome. Thank you. Whole group action here. Small group and then maybe one-on-one. -on -one. No, they just call that. Are we a group? We might be 7-Eleven, max two people, but anything larger, they consider a group and ask you to go if you're under 18. Yes. Okay, here we go. All right, time to find our greatest common factor. Well, between 11 and 17 here. All right, rough one, guys. We're still just pulling out that one ball. All right, we can again do the X. And again, it's the same steps on repeat. 11 divided by 1 is 11. X squared minus X to the first gives us the X. Let's do the same over here. 17 divided by 1 equals, yes, 17. And we can simply cross off our X here. All right. 1 and 2, or 1 times 22, 2 times 11, that's as great as it gets there. We can't use 11 because 34 divided by 11 it doesn't work because 33 divided by 11 is 3. However, we can use the number 2. Can we pull out anything else? Certainly can't. Can't get the X, just like we can't from any of the rest of them in this spot. All right, 22 divided by 2 is 11. Bring down that X. 34 divided by 2 is 17. And do we have exactly the same again inside the parentheses? Yes, we do. And yes, again, that's part of our answer. I know, I know what happens to me too. 1X plus 2 or just X plus to go ahead and circle your answer. All right, number nine. Similar, two times negative 14 will give us that negative 28 up top. The 3x will simply drop below. All right, um, I'm just going to go ahead and write the factors in here that work. Negative seven and four. Feel free to test it at home. All right, um, I guess I'll brown it in even though I didn't on the one above, but whatever. Doing the best I can and working through as quickly as possible with full-on instruction. All right, so let's go ahead and 2x squared minus 7x. We have a positive 4 here. We don't need to write the plus because I'm going to set it and forget it over here because I need to group it with the negative 14. All right, now technically, could you write it if you were writing it like all together? Yes. All right, but because of the instructions here, Go ahead and just group, boom, boom, boom. Greatest common factor, 1x again. All right, oh, let me do that in pink, sorry, my bad. Let me move this out of the way, it's kind of ruining my space too. So divide each by 1x, divide each by 1x. 2 divided by 1 is our 2x squared minus, boom, gives us the x, negative 7. My, divided by 1 is still negative 7. Cross those out, cancel it between 4 and 14. Yes, it is simply just a 2, and it is positive because the 4x is positive as well. All right, so we'll pull out the 2. We'll divide each by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Don't forget to bring down the x. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Close it, and again, What's in parentheses is 2x minus 7 and 2x minus 7. All right, so that will be part of our answer. Close it, and then 1x or just x plus 2 on the outside. Circle your answer. All right, so number 10, we have a difference of perfect squares again. However, oh my goodness, this one's not just x squared. It's 144x squared. Well, if we take the square root of 144... Oh, that looks like poo. Sorry. It's a 12. And the square root of that x is, or the x squared is simply the x. And again, difference. So we're going to have plus, close it. And again, we'll do our 12x minus, close it because of the difference. All right. And 10 times 10 is 100, but 10 times negative 10 is negative 100. Go ahead and circle your answer. This will look like number 17 on your unit quiz. All right, for number 11, it asks us to find the greatest common factor. All right, so just go ahead, guys. Numerically, it looks like between 35, 45, and 15, it's going to be a 5. All right, first term has an A in it. Second term has an A in it. Third term also has an A in it. What's the least valued A? Yes, it is a 2 or squared meaning we can take at least 5a squared from 
all of those. Now, first term has a B squared. Second term has just a B. Third term doesn't have a B. Well, we can't take a B. Circle your answer. All right, for number 12, this will look like number six on your unit review. And again, here we go. X cubed plus 9X squared plus 20X. All right, we can take an X from all of these. So here's what we're going to do. We can do that. All right, uh, let me just write it here. We'll divide all by X. Sorry, I didn't leave a whole ton of space there, but we're not utilizing a whole ton anyways. But if we know that we're subtracting variables, we're just rewriting the entirety of it. All right, and we're going to take that X out from each of them. So plus 20. All right, in our answer, we will need to have that X. So we're just going to put it on the outside, and it'll look just like this, okay? Now, if we do our C value, or A times C, we get our 20 up top. We get a 9 below. We need to make a 9 with the factors of 20, which is 5 and 4, or 4 and 5. Go ahead and box it, and we will also brown that in. However, um, it's not greater than 1. We've already found our answer, so let's just go ahead and write that in. All right, on the inside, we'll do x plus 5, and then we will do x plus 4. Circle your answer. All right, so when you have that x cubed, the x squared, and the x there, we can take an x from all of them. Make sure it's in the answer. It will go outside our two parentheses. All right, so number 13 will look like 17 and 19 on your unit. And again, so a little different here, okay? So we're doing the equals zero. All right, so it wants us to solve for our x-intercepts or for x, shall I say. We'll work through this. It's just a little added step. It's not a huge process. A times C is 2 times 25, giving you your 50 up top, all right? Your B value is your negative 15, phenomenal. All right, we can use negative 10 and negative 5. I'm just going to go a little quicker here. Um, I noticed my iPad's on 18%, and I don't know if, um, well, hopefully it lasts the whole way through. It should be enough, but just in case, I really just want to get this out and get this posted for everyone in the Math 3, as it is getting a little late at 721, and it'll probably take about 20 minutes to upload. All right, so let's just go ahead and rewrite this out. We have 2x squared minus 10x, leave a little space, minus 5x, plus 25. Now, when it's already set to zero, nothing changes. All right, so we'll go ahead and do this. We will find the greatest common factor within the first group, which is 2x. We will divide each by 2x. All right, 2 divided by 2 is simply 1. x squared minus x, again, yes, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. And again, the x's cancel out. Let's go ahead and find the greatest common factor here. Yes, it is negative 5 because the first term is negative, so we need the negative, and 5 is numerically it. No, we cannot pull out the x. We will divide each term by negative 5. Negative 5x divided by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. Don't forget to bring down your x. 25 divided by negative 5 is negative 5. All right, now from here, it's asking us, well, let's go ahead and write our answer first. All right, we have x minus 5 is one of them. And then our second group is 2x minus 5. Now, when it's asking you to solve for x, all right, I'm just going to do this in, let's use some other color if I can. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to switch it only because I'd have to get the other palette out and then it will ultimately change everything. But for those taking the unit 3A test, um, here's what we do. We need to get X by itself. All right. And since it's already equal to zero, you're basically setting these equal to zero. So let's do this. X minus five equals zero. All right. South for X plus five plus 5. So x equals 5. We're going to do the exact same thing. 2x minus 5 equals 0. All right, get 2x by itself, plus 5, plus 5. All right, we get 2x equals 5. Divide each side by, yes, 2. x equals 2.5. So x equals 5 and 2.5 is your answer, okay? So x equals 5 and x equals 2.5. All right.
moving forward, what number are we on? 14 looks like number 8 and number 18. Wonderful. Oh my goodness, what are we doing here? We again have to solve for X, I think, in this one. I don't think I wrote it. I'm so sorry that I didn't. Someone is at my door, so now I have to go up and check on that to see who it is. All right, it's very rare that I get a doorbell here at this hour, so let's go ahead and check that out. And uh, we'll just see who that is. Hello? Who is it, Maeve? Oh, my goodness. What's happening? Sorry, I'm in the middle of a math video here. How's it going, kiddo? Wonderful, thank you. All right. So sorry about that there. All right, didn't, was not expecting a visitor here. Yes, it is the one, the only, Maeve Elizabeth. Thank you so much, all right. Okay, here we go. Home from practice a little bit early today. All right, x squared plus 8x equals 20. First thing we need to do, we need to get this equal to zero. We need to take that 20, and we need to make it a minus 20 from both. All right, I'll do this here. We will rewrite this as x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals 0 because 20 minus 20 equals 0. Okay, from here, we do the same process on repeat. Sorry about that little winded, I know. Negative 20 up top, 8 below. Oh my goodness. All right, let's find those factors that get us there. It would be negative 10 and 2. Box it. Yes, it will brown it. Sorry about that. All right. And here we go. Let's just go for the rewrite. So we have x squared. All right. Oh, okay. My bad. What am I doing here? Sorry. A is 1. We can just go straight for it. My bad on that, too. Sorry. A little off, little off thought right now. x plus 2. And then from here, all right, in order to get that x... We will take out x minus 10, set it equal to 0. Take out x plus 2, set it equal to 0. Solve for x for both, plus 10, plus 10. x equals 10, minus 2, minus 2. x equals negative 2. Circle both because x is equal to 10 and negative 2. Moving forward to number 15 as we're getting close to dying here. Oh, my goodness. Thankfully, we're just doing great. Factor on this one. Between 18 and 63. We can pull out a nine ball, corner pocket. We'll set that down. We can also pull out, ooh, x to the sixth and x to the fifth. We take the least valued exponent, being x to the fifth, and then we will just divide each. 18 divided by nine is two. x to the sixth minus x to the fifth is simply just x. Negative 63x to the fifth divided by 9x to the fifth. Negative 63 my, divided by 9 is negative 7. And x to the fifth minus x to the fifth will cancel out. Go ahead and circle your answer. That'll look like 4 on your unit. And number 16, which looks like 10 on your unit. Yes, we're almost complete. And I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty pumped about it. All right. So we have what goes up top. I know you guys are absolute crushers by now. And a negative 3 on the bottom. All right. Um, let me see where I'm going here. Yes, we will do our green. We will get a negative 7 and a 4. Um, when multiply, we get our negative 28. And combined, we get our negative 3. Let's just go ahead and write in our answer. Since A is equal to 1, we will have X minus 7 and X is plus 4. And oh my goodness, we're finally done. Yes, the beast is over, not the multi.